the whole purpose of that racist agitprop is to create this never-ending cycle of a permanent, uh, the creation of a permanent underclass. Oh, wait, sorry. Well, let's watch the, TV. the law that broke U.S. immigration first, and then we'll get to Donald Trump. In the early 1990s, one contentious issue was hard to miss. Immigration. Is immigration good for America? The federal government won't stop them at the border. You spend five and a half billion dollars a year to support them. There's a right way, and there's a wrong way. At the time, there were around five million undocumented immigrants in the U.S. And most Americans saw immigrants as a burden on the country, taking jobs, housing, and health care, and thought immigration as a whole should be decreased. Our country is invaded by immigrants who are like cancer cells. That same year, Republicans ran on a tough-on-immigration platform and took control of Congress. Democrats were pushed to adopt tough positions on immigration, too. We are a nation of immigrants, but we are also a nation of laws. In 1996, President Bill Clinton signed a major piece of legislation, the Illegal Immigration Reform and Immigrant Responsibility Act, or... I love when people say, we're a nation of laws, as you're literally signing a new law to be unnecessarily harmful and violent towards immigrants. Okay. Yeah, we are a nation of laws. And you had every opportunity to write a law that was humane. And you chose not to do that. The fuck do you mean we're a nation of laws? Ira, Ira. Its goal was to decrease the number of undocumented immigrants. It did the opposite. Before the 1990s, undocumented immigration just like you can't trust our Kansas man. That's what happens. You get Bill Clinton into the U.S. looked very different. For one, it was usually temporary. People used to go back and forth across the border. They would go north and, you know, for the harvest, and they would earn some money, and they would go back to Mexico. And if yeah. they wanted to come live permanently in the U.S., there were a few legal channels, but not many. If they married an American citizen, they could get lawful status. Or if maybe their brother was a citizen already, he could sponsor them. Or an employer could. And these could be done after they were already living in the U.S. undocumented. Before 1996, the threat of deportation was relatively low. People were commonly deported for committing a crime, and it was mostly limited to major crimes like murder or trafficking. But Ira Ira, together with other 1996 laws, drastically expanded deportable crimes to even minor infractions like shoplifting. It was also retroactive. So say it's 1976 and someone is caught stealing some albums from the mall. They wouldn't be deported. Over the next 20 years, they never commit another crime. But after 1996, they could be deported because of that old misdemeanor. And not just if they were currently undocumented. This applied to immigrants with lawful status, too. And previously, an immigrant... Yeah, free, fro free flow of, uh, of commerce and traffic over borders. Surprisingly, uh, with no restrictions, surprisingly created a system where... Migrant workers could go back and forth and help out the Mexican economy on top of the American economy. When you decided to shut that off for no fucking reason other than like, you know, bullshit uh, reactionary uh, purposes. Well, I guess there is a materialist uh, reason for it. It's because you wanted to create a permanent underclass. That's when you uh, created this, this uh, problem. You just manifested it. Immigration judge could decide if the deportation should even take place. Now things were a little more automatic. Ignoring the fact that those deportations would be extremely harmful to U.S. citizen children or, to, or to spouses. Deportations skyrocketed, and Ira Ira created the framework for future laws that further expanded reasons people could be deported, especially after 9 11. But Ira Ira also made another huge fundamental change in the U.S. immigration system. One of the aspects of the 1996 law that is particularly strict and I think in many respects inhumane is the so-called three and 10 year bars. Those three and 10 year bars made these legal pathways nearly impossible to obtain. They work like this. Anyone who's been undocumented in the US for six months and wants to gain legal status first has to leave the country and be barred from returning for three years. If they've been undocumented for more than a year, they're barred for 10 years. 
So if they want to get lawful status through a job, they first have to leave the U.S. for 10 years, or through their brother, leave for 10 years, or through their spouse, leave for 10 years. It's family separation by uh, another name. The bars were intended to try to essentially create uh, punishments that were so severe to deter people essentially from coming here. But as we've seen with many other deterrence-based policies, the, the practical effect is very, is very different. Instead, it incentivized people to stay in the U.S. undocumented. Before IRA-IRA, Mexican immigrants who came to the U.S. unlawfully were about 50% likely to return to Mexico within a year. But after 1996, more people started staying in the U.S. There were around 5 million undocumented immigrants living at the U.S. before IRA-IRA. Today, it's at least double that. And we are somehow surprised by this outcome. This is of our own doing. Laws like IRA-IRA shaped the way the U.S. focuses on immigration enforcement as a deterrent. But really, it proved that stronger enforcement doesn't actually stop undocumented immigration. These laws or the politics in the 90s didn't really change the reasons why people come to the United States. Today, views on immigrants are very different than they were in the 1990s. Most Americans now see them as a strength, not a burden. But the laws created here haven't changed. Requirements and standards that were created decades ago that, that aren't responsive to... Remember, the main reason why this two-tier... Uh, the main reason why this two-tier criminal justice system for black and brown people versus white people exists is the exact same reason why there's a two-tier immigration system. It is to consistently have near-slave uh, wages and near-slave-like conditions in the workplace and have a constantly refilling pool of undocumented migrants that you can exploit and use against the documented labor force as well. The best way to deal with this problem is to, of course, offer undocumented migrants amnesty and allow them to become a part of the documented labor force and advocate alongside the documented labor force in unionization efforts. But we will never do that because they have to find new methods of doing slavery. A lot of the studies that we talk about, a lot of the studies that we talk about right now, with respect to the, the economic boon caused by undocumented migrants relies on that two-tier immigration system. Okay? Like, they, they're looking at the economic calculation and the economic impact of migrant workers while, uh, uh, you know, keeping them as a permanent underclass. And yes, as they are the permanent underclass, they are a huge boon. So it's this self-fulfilling prophecy almost. On, get out there and help Venezuelans, dude. Get on the news and speak out. You have the power. What? What do you mean? I, I'm, what do you think I'm doing right now? If Americans were truly hyper-nationalistic and truly as racist as Tucker Carlson is, like in a sense where they just literally do not want, like Port, or not Portland, Oregon style, they just did not want any black or brown people in their vicinity, then we would be murdering the business owners that have baked into their profit margins the tiny amount of fines that they have to pay every time they call ICE on themselves. Okay? They would literally shut up jail the business owners, effectively destroying any opportunity that migrant workers could potentially have. But we don't do that. Because... The whole purpose of that racist agitprop is to create this never-ending cycle of a permanent, uh, the creation of a permanent underclass. It can't reimbursement stuff. Use all your money to make the bad stuff stop. Just don't sit there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that right now. Our needs as a nation, they certainly aren't responsive to, to the needs of, of immigrant populations. The idea that if we only had more guns, if we only built a higher wall, that we'd solve all the problems, I think we learned from 96 that's not the way it works. It's not that simple.
Don't make migrants illegal. Make it illegal to pay undocumented migrants less than the American citizen working right next to them. Yeah.